Blue sword two, blue sword two. Set. Hat. The Rob Ash Show featuring Drake University football. Head football coach Rob Ash and your host Mick Trier. Brought to you in part by Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leaders. And by Home Team Pizza, free, fast delivery. It's a hit. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Rob A. Show. Well, Coach, congratulations. Another win for the uh, Drake Bulldogs, 28-21 over Valparaiso. A very, very hard-fought football game for you. Oh, Mick, that was a great football game. I'm still trembling. I just watched the highlights again, and it's, uh, it's, it was a nerve-wracking game. Valparaiso has a great offense, and the kind of uh, people on their team, offensively speaking, who can score at any time, and it literally wasn't over until the final play and the final second ticked off. Is this a Valparaiso team that was uh, maybe a little better than even you thought it was? I think their offense was extremely good. Uh, they, uh, they have Nick Browder and Ozzie Young and some other good uh, skill people, receivers and so forth, and they, they had scored a lot of points, but they had been shut out once when they had a lot of turnovers against Wisconsin Whitewater. We kind of thought maybe we'd be more like Wisconsin Whitewater, but they, they proved to be really good on offense, and they played an inspired second half on defense, so they were, they were probably a little better than we expected. Well, we saw some great performances, of course, and especially in the fourth quarter. When we finally get to the highlights, it's the fourth quarter. You've got to wait and uh, see what happens. Oh, well, listen, the fourth quarter was really exciting. Our team, uh, we, they tied us, and then our offensive team went back down and scored to go ahead, and then they had two or three pushes into our territory that were very exciting. Our defense came through and held on, and we got the win. Well, the Drake Bulldogs pick up the win and move to 3-0 in uh, Pioneer Football League standings. We'll take a look at the highlights of this football game right after this. Quality. Style. Football game on Saturday, a little cold and a lot of wind. Did that concern you at all with your football team? Well, Mick, it always concerns us with the wind, and it was a huge factor in this game. It was blowing very hard just out of one side of the field. So one quarter you'd be with the wind at your back, and, and the other one you'd have the wind in your face. And so half of each game, you know, you had to be thinking about that. And it really made a big difference in the kicking game and in the passing game, and overall something you had to be concerned about. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights of this football game, a hard-hitting football game, and here come the Bulldogs. We started out, the uh, coin toss was very important, and Valparaiso won it, so they deferred to the second half. We had to take the ball, so they kicked off with the wind, and you can see right away the wind carries the ball very deep. But we were very happy with our opening kickoff return, and now we're going against the wind. See, and Cortez Hull makes a beautiful run here all the way out across the 50, and I thought right at this point, this is terrific. This is exactly what we want. Unfortunately, on our first offensive possession, we had two penalties. And so we got pushed back and, and without being able then to, to punt Valparaiso deep. And you can see our first punt here definitely uh, was difficult into the wind. So we, after punting, we were about where Cortez was after the first kickoff return. And Valparaiso should have had, you know, they should have been pinned very, very deep in their own territory. Now you can see the wind again affecting the play here as uh, uh, Nick Browder, their quarterback, throws about a 60-yard pass. I think Kerman Mason misjudged the ball a little bit. The wind carried it really deep, and Hendricks makes a good, a good uh, reception. And uh, there's no wind factor on this one, Nick. Browder just ran the option. Big, strong, fast quarterback, very impressive athlete. And so they took off on their first possession and scored right away 6-0. Now we're going into the wind here, and we decided we had to try to keep the ball away from Browder and also going into the wind, try to run the football. Uh, we started out uh, Schimberg there with a really good run, and then here's Jason Grove behind blocks by Felix Gallagher and Matt Jones. Excellent job on the counter sweep. Took them a little bit by surprise. We had a couple wrinkles on that play they hadn't seen in terms of the blocking. So we got across midfield, and then we fumbled the football. Now, luckily, it was down deep in, in uh, Valpo's territory, but you know it gave them the ball right back, and they're scary on offense. They have a good fullback up inside, and Matt Garvis, though, made the tackle, and so they punted back to us. We still were trying to run the football like we had intended in, in this game. Charlie Schimberg on a good trap. Here's a little motion that they hadn't seen, and the, and the outside zone play to, to Grove running hard, getting down inside the 10-yard uh, line. We ran Schimberg a couple of times, and then the second time he had it behind a good block there on the right side of the line, Richie Hoskins blocking up top. We got the uh, touchdown and the PAT for a 7-6 lead. Valpo comes out. Look at Browder here. They say on each assign, you know, options, you got to have a guy for each person, you know, dive, quarterback, and pitch. Well, we had a guy for dive, quarterback, and pitch, but he made the quarterback guy miss. And luckily, they went on down the field and fumbled the ball back to us. 
So, you know, Browder, you know, his first foray here in the, in the first quarter was very impressive. We had great difficulty with him. Again, now we're going into the wind, but Roy made a nice throw out here to Richie Hoskins, got us a little bit of, of field position. That was what was important about that. And then we let the clock run out, and uh, we ended up having to punt, but we punted with the wind, so Valparaiso was deep in their own territory. Now they were facing into the wind here in the second quarter, and Matt Miller, who was playing in place of an injured Scott Lupori, almost made an interception that would have been a touchdown. Unfortunately, he didn't quite pull it out, so Valparaiso still has the football. Browder can buy time better than just about anybody I've ever seen, but we finally closed in on him on this uh, one of the few times here. And now, remember again, the, the wind in our face, in their face, and, and uh, we rushed the punter. Look at this one. It went almost straight up and, and was knocked down by the wind. I think they got a six yard net gain on the punt. So we got the ball in great position. The running game was going extremely well. Jason Grove coming out of a uh, one back formation. Gets a good gain. Here's Jason again. Looks like the same play, but he bounces it outside. Running real hard, getting down uh, close to the 10-yard line. Uh, we ran Schimberg here. He powers the ball down to about the five. Uh, they came up and hit pretty hard, but we did a nice job getting uh, people blocked at the point of attack, and then our running backs did a good job when they got to the second level. Schimberg powers that thing in for a 14-6 lead. So the punt into the wind that they messed up uh, was trouble for them. And then Jimmy Scarless causes a fumble here on the very next possession, and John Kunster, number 41, rakes it out of the pile. He's got it right there, and we were in good shape. We ran two plays and didn't get much out of it, so, so we tried a little flare pass here to Jason Grove on third and goal from the 10. We have this on replay. You'll watch uh, as Jason comes out here on the flare that, first of all, Matt Jones chops down the defensive end, and then Jason makes a tremendous catch here, one-handed. Look at this. The ball's a little outside. I think the wind might actually blown it a little bit in front of Jason, but he makes a great catch here, one-handed. Actually, he has to bounce it up once and catch it a second time with one hand. And pulls it in, and then if you look right above him, you'll see great block there by Richie Hoskins, and then Felix Gallagher runs into that guy, and then here's Grove making a guy miss. Great move right there, great cut back up inside. So one guy misses, and then the free safety uh, misses coming across, and the last man has to make the tackle. So on third and goal from the 10, with a really good individual play, uh, we get the ball down to the, to the one yard line. So now it's fourth and goal from the one. And it's 14 to 7. We just felt like we were running the ball well enough. We debated, asked the guys upstairs there on the radio what to do. Finally decided to go for it. Charlie Schimberg got in there. Great decision for us the way the game worked out because in the second half we really needed all those points. So here we go now after the flurry of two touchdowns. Our defense uh, began to get better. Now through the second quarter we played our best defense of the game. We stopped the option there uh, on the pitch. Tommy Becker making a play. Stopping the inside play, and there's a quarterback player stopped, and there's the pitch player stopped. So we got them all three defended. I think I got another one of these on here, same deal. Dive player, here's a quarterback, and there's the pitch. We got people for everybody on the option, and eventually we took them out of their option game here in the second quarter, and Browder tried to, to throw the ball. Larry tried a quarterback draw, and we went to halftime with a good lead. We've got some exciting second half highlights coming up, but first we need to show you some of our fine sponsors. Now they uh, they really are, and they did. They had a good. They did a good job in the halftime adjustments. They started out trying to run the option. John Kunster there with a good tackle against Browder, and then uh, Browder out here on the option again. The pitch to Ozzie Young, and again we've got good, good defense. And we should have had a fumble there. That ball got knocked away from Ozzie Young, and Tommy Becker had the football, and uh, they didn't give it to him. And then they they completed a pass. And then Browder found the receiver deep. And this was a remarkable throw because that's right into the teeth of that wind. And uh, this was all on their first drive. This is a two-point conversion here. They finds the fullback in a flat and he barely makes it in. So they took the first drive into the wind, kept the ball for seven minutes, kept the ball away from us. And uh, we know we were going to try to throw here a little bit with the wind when we finally got it back and we fumbled. So we wasted our whole third quarter when we had the wind and we weren't able to put them away. And here's how things were going. There's a tipped pass right there that goes past the guy he was throwing it to, to another one of his own players. Ozzie Young makes a reception. So they, they come down, but on fourth down, they go for it because it's too far for a field goal into the wind and the ball was incomplete. So our defense made a great stop after the fumble. We're punting with the wind here now. They rushed us, but Matt Sneller got off a really good punt deep, and we were very concerned about Ozzie Young on returns. We worked all week on trying to keep him bottled up. That's about a 10 or 12 yard return, but with the length of the punt, that wasn't too bad. Um, here's uh, Browder again, running the football out there, and, and a big play for us as he tried to scramble. He was you know, 
carrying the ball with one hand. We got the fumble, we got a first down, uh, and then we missed the second time, uh, second set of three downs, and, and had to go for the field goal. Mike McKee kicked it with the wind, but, uh, and it was long enough, but just a little bit left, and uh, so we missed it, and then Browder starts to work. We've switched now, we're in a fourth quarter, and uh, Valparaiso has the wind at their backs. Everybody went deep, and, and Valparaiso uh, ran, the Browder ran out of there, and then they ran a fullback inside. Two huge running plays in a row, very uncharacteristic for our defense to give up running plays like that. And then uh, Valpo comes out here on a pass. This is a fourth down play. Watch this play by Browder. He's sacked. That play is over on fourth down. It's going to be our football, but he got away, threw the ball down in the corner of the end zone. Hendricks makes a great catch. All of a sudden, the game's tied, and uh, you know it, the pressure was on. Fourth quarter, nothing had gone much right for us, but now our offense came up to yeah, up to par. They, uh, Jason Grove there on our uh, outside zone. Uh, we got a couple other uh, good plays, and then we had two poorer plays. So it's third and ten here. We ran the outside play again, and Grove makes a big one. They were expecting us to pass on third and ten. They were playing a little bit loose. That gave him some, some daylight. Jason made a great run, got good blocks at the point of attack, and got us going. Meanwhile, uh, Charlie Schimberg had gotten injured on this drive. So Pete Lobeye's out there in front blocking, and uh, Grove takes it down to about the the one yard line, we thought he got in, but they didn't give it to us, and then we put in Pete. Pete's done a tremendous job as a backup pullback for Schimberg, and he takes the ball in for the, the go-ahead touchdown, 28 to 21. Key drive, because the Valpo had all the momentum and was really in great shape. They tied us up. If they had gotten a ball back right away, I think it would have been uh, difficult for us to stop them again, but by the time they got the ball back, we had the lead. We stopped them, and then you can see another great punt with the wind. B.J. Hellyer almost mishandled it. In fact, didn't catch it the first time, but he was very poised. And picked the football up and got the ball out, and then we fumbled the snap. Uh, this, this was, a, like you said, Mick, when you first looked at these highlights, it was a high-low type of game. We'd make a great play, and then we'd make a terrible play, and here we make a great defensive play. Uh, bottled up the inside counter. They called Browder for intentional grounding. So that set up a fourth down. Now we're down to just a couple minutes left in the game here. Fourth down and, th and uh, 13. Notice our defensive backs are really deep here. And Browder's going to try to throw the ball in the end zone for the touchdown. We got him sacked because of good coverage, but he got away. And so then he bought a lot of time. This was very nerve wracking for everybody on our team. He finds a guy, they caught it, but it was out of bounds. So. Uh, you know, we stopped him on that fourth down play. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a first down, so we had to punt into the wind, and that was the best kick of the day, the best special teams play of the day. It was Matt Sneller with about a 45-yard punt into the wind when we had to have it in the fourth quarter. But Browder wasn't through. Once again, you know, we had to play deep because of how far he can throw the football, and then he scrambled out of there. And now there's less than a minute left. They're trying to hurry up and trying to get the play going here. And this is a uh, about 30 seconds left, 20 seconds left. He's scrambling around. We finally got a hold of him and, and pulled him down. He had time for one last play, and he throws the ball deep in the end zone here to their six foot five receiver, and he's up against Kerman Mason, who's about 5'8 or 5'9, but the ball got carried by the wind out of the back of the end zone. Huh, we won. Yeah, <laughs> finally won it. I got to go back, though, to that run by Jason Grove when you had long. It was a third and long. That was a big run. Nice cut back. It really was. We ran a lot uh, on that play all day. And, you know, the guys up front uh, on that side of the line, you know, Jeff Portman and Garrett LaFleur and um, our tight ends, mostly it was Ed Jennings in there. Uh, they did a great job setting Jason up. But third and ten, you know, I'm coaching. You're not expecting a run, are you? And uh, that fooled him a little bit. And it really... It was a key play because we got clear down inside and, and got the ball in the end zone. That was important. Let's take a quick look at the uh, stats of this ball game. I don't like what I see here, Mick. In particular, the, the turnovers. We've had a, a high number of turnovers two weeks in a row. Uh, we've got to get that stopped if we want to win the league. Uh, Valparaiso's offense was terrific. You can see their possession time was better than ours. Really, they had the advantage in every, one, every area except the most important one, the score. Let's see if you like the standings. I do like what I see here. <laughs> I guess that's all that matters. And, you know, it's going to be a great game this week against Dayton. Uh, San Diego, though, is playing great. They beat Valparaiso and Evansville. They only have a loss to Dayton. So they're sitting out there in San Diego thinking they still have a chance to win this. We'll be back with more of the Rob A. Show right after this. Our Capital City Buick play of the game. Here's head coach Rob A. This week's play of the week came on defense with 11 seconds left in the game. 
The situation is, of course, we were ahead seven points. That was going to be the final score, 28-21. But Valparaiso was in good shape. Uh, they were down on the 25-yard line, and Browder's got the football, so anything can happen. First of all, you want to watch the pass protection right here. Brian Peck makes a great effort to get to the quarterback on this play, but he gets tackled uh, on his block, actually literally tackled down, but no flag was thrown, so the play had to go on. Meanwhile, Eric Musha makes a good push, gets up past his man, but he gets knocked down by the uh, fullback on a chop block. Uh, Jay Smirka down here is double teamed, so it's left to Brian Andrews, a fourth one of our four-man rush to come in and uh, try to save the day. He is able to grab onto Browder. Many times Browder got away, but this time Brian Andrews got him, was able to, to hang on so Browder couldn't uh, run for the necessary yardage. Browder did manage to get the football away there and pass the football, so there were only three sec there were three seconds left in the game after he went down, but his last pass was also incomplete. So after chasing Browder all day, the defensive line got the job done. Nice job of the Drake defense. Time now for a home team pizza player interview. Mike Mahon has the interview. This week's special features with uh, our feature player Nate Schneider, Jr. Offensive lineman from Hudson, Iowa, and uh, Nate, just a great victory today over a Valparaiso four-quarter game. Yeah, it really was a great victory. Uh, Valparaiso is a very, very good team, uh, very strong offensively, as you can see from the game. They were very explosive uh, when they needed to be in the fourth quarter. Uh, our defense did very well, though, handling them, and uh, our offense came off the ball, and I think it was just a great game altogether. You know, sometimes when you play a potent uh, offensive team like Valparaiso, a lot of coaches will say your best defense is going to be a ball control offense. And I know you take pride in time of possession. You had a three-minute advantage at halftime. But I tell you, I think some of your scoring drives, you had to be amazed at how quickly they were going because your linemen, your teammates were just opening up big holes for Jason and Charlie Schimberg. They had runs seven, eight, ten yards to carry. Well, uh, I guess you're right about uh, trying to keep uh, their offense off the field because that is their their, their power. Uh, so we were trying to run the ball and, and eat some time off the clock. Uh, our defense did a good job, but they were open. Uh, we were opening up holes. Uh, the offensive line was, but the running backs were doing their job, and Roy was doing his job. It was just a great execution. And when everybody does their job, then then we look good, and the whole team looks good. I think though the the, the success of the running game even had to surprise you guys because you knew you'd have to really have a diverse, wide open, balanced attack to be successful against the Crusaders today. Yeah, uh, we were looking to be very balanced with the run and the pass. Uh, we worked pretty hard this week uh, with quite a few different run plays and pass plays. Uh, it seemed like the running was going very well for us with the wind. It was very windy uh, and uh, I think we came off and fired off the ball. Uh, the runs were there for us so we decided to take a few of those but although we varied it up with the passes once in a while. You guys, you've been an offensive lineman throughout your high school career. Uh, they say guys in the trenches never get the credit. Is it finally kind of sunk in on you that hey my limelight is going to be if I'm successful in having these guys gain over 100 yards rushing or if we're successful in gaining over 300 yards. Uh, how do you, as the rest of your teammates, appraise yourselves? Uh, with the offensive line, when I speak for the offensive line, I think that we look at uh, how far the back ran. The backs at Drake are doing an excellent job. When they, they get a hole, they make the run. But uh, our glory, I guess, when we don't get to talk to the cameras all the time, is to uh, see those those uh, high scores and with the, the long yard runs. Uh, so that's our glory more than anything. Well, it sets up a great uh, matchup next week against Dayton. And I know you guys, the reason behind your success, you've been taking one game at a time. Now you can forward, finally look ahead to the two-time defending league champion, Dayton Flyers. Yeah, they're going to be a very, very tough team. Uh, they're very strong. I heard they did very well today. Uh, we're looking forward to playing them, but we've been taking it one game at a time, not looking ahead. Uh, we looked to Valpo. We played Valpo. We ended up winning Valpo. Now we're looking on to Dayton, and hopefully it'll be a victory. We're going to work very hard this week to uh, do everything that we can. Well, you're a bright student, uh, academic All-American candidate, uh, goals uh, down the road of mid-school, and uh, great grade point average. What about your future goals? Uh, I'd like to play another year at Drake and then hopefully uh, go on to medical school. It's I'm in the application process right now, so it's too tough to tell, but I'm hoping that'll be where I go. i really like to do that. Uh, I'm still playing at Drake, though, so I'm having a good time. Well, I'm sure Joel Hadcheck looks forward to having you back another year. Yeah, I want to come back. Uh, playing football has been the best thing in my life. I think it's just a great thing, and I wish everyone could experience it. That's our halftime guest for the Coaches Show, Nate Schneider. And our thank you to Mike Mayon with that interview. Well, it's number one and number two in the Pioneer Football League coming up this week. We'll talk to the head coach about it right after this.
It's apparent when you arrive at... ...is matching up at Drake Stadium. Coach, it's here. The game that we've been looking for. You're right, Mick. We were hoping all year long that we could get to this game in this position, undefeated, and, you know, get after it, and that's, what, that's what's happened. We're ready to go now and play Dayton. I hope we have a great home crowd, and I hope we can get them this year. Let's take a look at the highlights of this football game last year. Well, last year we played out at Dayton, and it was also for the conference championship. Our defense played really well in this game. They got 24 points, but one of them, one of the touchdowns was on an interception return. And you can see from these highlights, we stopped their running game extremely well. And I know that they were frustrated with that. I mean, they even resorted to a halfback pass last year, Mick. And we got them stopped. We did a good job defensively. I think they're probably better on offense this year and, you know, a little bit more diversified with more option and more pass. But we have to have a great defensive game. I know that We've said it a lot, of course, that uh, the Bulldogs can't turn the ball over, and they've really got to play well early, and this is one of those games Drake's going to have to do that. Well, turnovers have killed us against Dayton every year we've played them. Uh, two years ago, we had a, an excellent team and an excellent chance against them, and we had four fumbles in the first half. Last year, we had five turnovers in the game against Dayton. We will not win if we do that again this year. We've just got to stop the turnovers. In the conference, Dayton is number one in rushing offense. You're number one in uh, defense, of course, in the, against the rush. Is that where the key is going to be? Well, I think it always is. We believe that the team that's going to win the league is going to be the team that can run the ball and stop the run. And our team does a good job in rush defense, and we run the football well ourselves. And so I think that's the key. But the other part of it will be big plays. Dayton, uh, their quarterback, Brian Cadle, throws the deep ball off play action and just drop back extremely well if they hit the deep balls better than we do. And that's been our forte over the years. We hope we can get back to that so that we have a deep ball advantage to go with our running game, and that'll help us win. I take it you don't want to get into a scoring derby with them? No. Uh, they, they are very explosive. We don't want to get into a Valparaiso-type game where it's just all up and down the field. You know, with, we want to have a close-to-the-vest tight game. You know, one thing we do know, we need a big, big fan. Uh, uh, out big there. crowd. We'd like to have a big crowd. It's, you know, every other year they come here, they're, it's the top game. We would like to see people out there. We'll see you on Saturday, and we'll see you back here for the Rob A Show.